Moves. I'm not cherry picking. You're Einstein. I sit there and say he did not. Every single terrestrial experiment he did or looked at could not prove, actually prove, that the Earth was stationary. That's what he says. He, he was talking about experiments where you're measuring changes in acceleration and velocity and position. No, he's where you're in your little spaceship trying to, to measure how, you, how you're moving. That's that's the kind of thing. That, don't ignore, um, you don't ignore what there is relativity. You can have different reference frames. And what Einstein said, and is correct, is that the laws of physics are the same in these different reference so frames. Law, that's what he said that was so revolutionary. What's, what's the law of physics of water? Oh, the it's gravity. Gravity. maintains level. Okay, you want can, we, we've got a whole lot of <laughs> material to cover. Can we yeah. I've give you a chance? Can I, can I try to... Same thing, stellar abbreviation. Stellar aberration. Assumption. But you have to tilt Assumption. the... No, this is actually it's measured. That 20 it, degrees it, it, or minutes it, it, of it, arc it, is it. measured. 20 it's assumption. You can't use assumptions seconds. to call in fact. 20 seconds of arc. You can't use arc. assumptions to call in fact. But these are not assumptions. These yes, are measurements. Assumptions. These are measurements that we have to correct the angle of the telescope to see the light. That's a measurement, I mean, right? I can't argue. I can't argue if you're going to sit there and just deny that it is an assumption. It is an assumption. You're at least I, I, I can't argue if you're going to say that a measurement is not a measurement. Because one thing you'll say is an assumption. It's a measurement. You say it's proof. Okay, Coriolis. The Coriolis effect. There it is. There's the equation for it. No way, proof. And guess what? The guys that shoot guns. No, they don't. Here, do yes, they do. This is from the truth about guns.com. A sniper manual from the Marine Sniper. Okay. Can I can I just make my points? You had you had an hour to make your points. Well, you know. There it is in black and white. Yes, long range shooters have to take the Coriolis into account. I I got this off the internet. I am not lying. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is a legitimate gun the, the uh, range snipers, site. The range snipers fire at the Coriolis forces is the Coriolis effect is, is negligible, but the range at which artillery fires, it is not negligible. Okay, for these expert marksmen, a thousand yards, they're getting a three inch difference. That's enough for these expert marksmen to care. Yeah. They care about it. It's a real effect. Let's move on. It's a measured, there real no effect. Okay, see. here's a good one. Would you not let me comment on it? I just there show you right now that I got it right on this laptop that shows you a Marine sniper manual from the Marines, straight from the Marines, the United States government. There's not one mention of the coronary effect in the whole manual. Why is that? Because maybe they're not shooting over t uh, 2,000 yards. And in ballistics, you really oh, do oh, need to okay, take okay, coriolis so into effect. How come my helicopter, when it lifts off the ground, the, the earth don't spin underneath it? <sighs> because of air. The or, the air it's goes along with the earth. earth. Why? Bullet, when Hurricane Harvey was sitting in, in Houston, Texas for oh, two weeks, I mean, you, why didn't that hurricane come around the earth every day? I mean, because of the air goes with the earth. Here's a question I'd really like now, to answer. Now, that, that is a hard one. Now, I can see that. That is a good question. Th that shows the North Pole, or the, the polar arrows, the North Pole, the stars are going clockwise. Exactly. And then, and if you look toward the south, this, this is an amazing picture. It's a long time picture, so it shows the stars, and it shows 180 degrees. This point here is basically that point there. When you're looking south, you can't see the, the southern uh, pole star. It's below the horizon, but you can see the stars are going clockwise around the south. This is something you can do. When we look at the Big Dipper at Polaris, the stars are they, they stars rise in the east and they go down in the west, and they're going counterclockwise. When we look to the south, we see the stars rise in the east, go to the west, and they are going clockwise. This is what we see, and there is no way you can do this on a flat no, earth. Not. Because if well, you're assuming a flat, flat earth, I just told you. I'm, a, I'm assuming the flat earth that, no, that you no, described, no, that you accepted. No, because you're saying that the flat earth theory, no, there's not. I believe we have a celestial ball around us. It ain't a dome. It is a celestial ball. So that explains. If a celestial ball of stars was rotating around the earth, it would not look like this. It doesn't matter. What, how, does the EQ, how does the EQ mount work on a telescope? What does it do? It, it, it tracks. It, it, 
It, so it's based on you know, it's based heliocentric on theory? Ball. It's based on a celestial ball. It goes, it's not based <clears> on a circular <throat> Earth. It's based on a celestial ball. The EQ mount on your thing is that. And that will give you that, that too. So that's no excuse. You can regard the stars as a sphere. That's a way to locate them. It's a handy way to locate them. And that's what I'm telling you. What I'm telling you is this picture could not happen on a flat no, Earth. Because you can't have stars going clockwise over here and counterclockwise over there on a flat Earth. Let's move on. Gravity, do you think it's real? No, it's made up. <laughs> no, I want to show you this picture. Um, why is this guy having a hard time walking uphill? And I know it's just for the sake of argument, say gravity is a Masonic hoax, um, doesn't exist. So I want you to explain why it is harder to go uphill. Because, let's see, uh, force of motion? How what force? How What's creating the force? How about Buoyancy and density. Buoyancy and density? Yes. How, so if I let off a hydrogen balloon or helium balloon up and it's supposed to, is that anti gravity? Is that anti gravity? No. Did I just create an anti gravity device because that balloon floated in the air? No, uh, well, gravity is pulling on it but because it's so lighter. Like, uh, the air is pushing it up. So is it okay. Did I create an anti gravity ball? Right? What a comment over here. Go ahead. This is my first time here. The <laughs> this gentleman explained something about how he believes there's a flat earth. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect to get two lectures, one from the flat earth gentleman and one from the uh, heliocentric uh, the president. Ask a few and uh, maybe you should have given another presentation to refute this. I think that like I'd like to have a donut, and I think I'd like to listen to some comments from the from the uh, audience here and get back to why, you know, simplify. Why do you think, for example, give us a synopsis of why you think the Earth is flat. See, that's now, I'm not asking you to do it now. I'm just saying. I think, I think I've got some really good questions. I'd, I'd like to, can I proceed with them? I have a few more. Greg, but see, you're saying you're bringing up gravity when nobody, nobody in here, I think, is gonna make gravity to prove it. Does anybody make gravity to prove it in here? Have they found gravity? It's, yeah. Oh, yeah, gravity. sure. That's what exists. makes it hard to go uphill. Who says true gravity exists? Oh my goodness. That's the only thing that explain that very well. So when I let a balloon go up, like I said, yes. anti gravity, I just create an anti gravity device by letting a balloon go up in the air. Wall Street. Okay, I've got a, a question for you. Well, before we move on, Cavendish. Uh, you can actually buy the Cavendish experiment for three thousand dollars. It's a real experiment, and you can measure gravity. I don't expect you to believe that. Okay, here's what you were saying: buoyancy and density. Why does the balloon go up and the submarine submarine go down? Uh, if if the mass, if the density is greater than the surrounding fluid, it, it uh, sinks. So goodbye gravity. So here's a question for you. Here's a scale. And we've got one liter of water here, and we've got two liters of water there, and they're both water, they're exactly the same density, and they're in the atmosphere, which has the same density. How come this one pulls the scale down? Because it's twice as much water as the other one? Yeah. But you just said it was density. You just said gravity so, doesn't exist, and it's simply density. These things have the same density. They should be on the same level, according to what you just said. You have more of one than the other. We have more mass, that means more weight, that means more force from gravity. You know, gravity explains this. You don't need gravity, gravity to explain why things drop. You don't need a magical gravity. Or, well, you know why you need gravity? And explain how you can be stuck upside down on a spinning ball of water. That's why you need gravity. Other than that, you don't need gravity. No, gravity <laughs> explains why some things are heavier That's than others. It really does. Why you need can we uh, go on? Here's a, here's a meme that shows. Um, how ridiculous it is if we were spinning at 1,040 miles an hour and, and nothing's happening when at, 60 at, miles an hour, at, it's at like that. 1.9 million miles an hour to that, you don't feel nothing. Yeah, well, when you, when you actually calculate the acceleration, it's about a quarter of a G for this, about 12 G for that, pretty painful. 0 0.003, the Earth takes a whole day to turn around. That's we just the, don't feel one, that acceleration. Not, this picture is funny. But everything is moving along the way. 
just doing the circuit. You got at every other. Our level. solar system is moving. It wobbles, it turns, it flips, it turns. It's, 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 it's going two million miles an hour. Okay. Nobody wants to get all that though. You just real question. I have a real question. Come on, man. At least what I'm covers the sun during an eclipse? Rahu and Ketchum. We all know. And Rahu and Ketchum. You ever heard of them? Uh, it's a Hindu thing. Can you prove it's the moon? Can you prove the moon? Actually, I can. Actually, yeah, some creationists it. did that. They, some oh, young Earth creationists <laughs> took this picture of the eclipse <laughs> on August twenty first. This this is a real no, picture awesome. by young Earth creationists. It's CGI, yes. And and what they did was they let the corona be overexposed. Usually, people. Make the corona exposed right, and that means the the sun is a black ball. You know but these guys let the overexposure happen, and guess what? There's the moon with its seeds and Murray and craters. No other people have done this. This I just thought was uh, pretty cool. How many moons does Earth have? The one real big one. Now they're saying we have three. We have two dust clouds that are calling moons. You look it up. That's the same. We have three. Okay, that doesn't. Prove that the moon what doesn't cause eclipses. I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get the answer to the question as to what caused the eclipses. What, what was your answer? Um, Rahu and Ketu. I, I, what, really I don't know what that is. What is Rahu, Rahu and if what? If you look at ancient cosmology, they say there's other, there's other entities up there that we can't see. So basically, if they're called Rahu and Ketu, they're shadow. We, you can't see them. They're, they're just like the, NASA is now admitting there's like these big clust balls that you can't see, but they're calling them moons. And they're up there, kind of like Rahu and Ketu, if you ask me. But they're saying we have three moons now. Okay, but I just, I just, I just want to make sure you understand what you're saying. Yeah, it's Rahu. I just want to make sure. It's R A H U and Ketu K A T U. So, so, Chinese so what's causing the shadow? Uh, they, 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 they eclipse the sun. They, they eclipse the sun. The Rahu and Ketu. I guess it's a round body. You have to get more into the mythology. And it's not as a myth. It's so it's something mythological. It's, it's not. A, it's, it's, not a it's a round mythological body. It's the cosmology. That's what they believe. That's what they believe. They believe this entity or another object called Ketu or Rahu that you couldn't see. So it only appears when it eclipses? Exactly. It only eclipses the moon and the net. Yes, exactly. That's another thing. It eclipses the sun and the net. I'm going to go with the creationist on this one. But, uh, <laughs> but like I said, those other thousands of asked, and that's the same. We have three moons. I just want to turn that on there. Yeah, turn okay. it out. So here's another question. I've just got some questions I'd like to get out there. Uh, Octans, the, the southern pole star, the, the uh, equivalent of Polaris or, or northern pole star. Um, the one that never moves? How, uh, how come people in South America can't see Polaris? And, and how come, and where would they look for Octans? If you can see if this is the flat Earth map, they'd be looking in different directions. For the was same it, who was it that was that thing. article that reminded me? Somebody was, who said, Dave here, can you please get us some 24 hour sun footage from Antarctica? Oh, there's plenty of it. But you guys say it's CGI, so what's the point? Let's move on. We need more. See, you just want, because there's only like one or two. Oh, no, there's dozens and dozens, and as many as I find, people say, well, CGI, CGI. Let's move on. Southern Cross. How come I've never seen that in my lifetime? I've been southern equator. But it's, it's called the my friends in Australia, it's they're only a few long thousand long miles long away, long and they can see it. It's going to drop down the horizon so bad to where the angle of attack, you can't, see, you can't even see it. But it's still there, but you can't see it because you're too far from it, Dave. Come on. It's the simple laws of vision, man. Come on. Stop with these Well, the heliocentric theory has a different explanation. Southern Cross, I can't see it because the Earth is in the way. Well, because it's a very the simple explanation. It drops low in the horizon. It drops Actually, um, you can see the top, the northern star of the Southern Cross from Albuquerque at the right time of year and the right time of day. It's not that they're too far away, it's that the Earth is in How the way. How about this I get on my camera right here, I can go set this probably, I can probably set this piece of paper right here on the ground. Uh -huh. Right here, I can get my camera, come back here, and set it down, and guess what? That paper, those papers will disappear on a flat surface. You won't be able to see those papers 10 feet away from you. I, I know why about perspective. That? Why is that? Because that doesn't explain everything. Perspective. That's why you can't see the stars. The same reason why I can't, you can't see the piece of paper down there. I mean, you should be able to see it on a flat Here's screen. a simple experiment anybody can do anywhere in the world. If they go out in the, in the evening sky and use the Big Dipper to find Polaris, the elevation of Polaris equals your latitude. So here in Albuquerque, 35 degrees. If you were up in Once again, New York, it would be 44 degrees. Once in again, Canada, 
It would be like 60 right. degrees. So can I ask you once again, why does it, when you ask people if the Earth is flat, they always got to talk about the stars, the sun, or the moon? Because I'm talking about the Earth is flat. Can you prove that the Earth is curving and water is sticking and curving? But this is a way you can prove the Earth is curving. Anywhere, any night, any night of the year, people can measure the elevation of the North Star and they can compare it to their latitude. And every time somebody does that, it proves the Earth How is round. How does the universal astrolabe work, David? How does that the universal astrolabe? Not, not the one where you got to switch the things, but a true universal, which you'll find very little about. You can sit there and say, a universal astrolabe is one plate that will tell you where all the stars at are on an entire freaking hemisphere. Okay. You're changing the subject. No, I'm not changing because you keep talking about the stars, so I'm asking you about the stars. I'm talking about the world. land is flat. Go out there and measure the curvature. Show okay. the water is sticking and curving around to that ball. The point I'm making here is that the angle of Polaris depends on your latitude, no, and no. heliocentric or round Earth theory so explains that around, very well. You're, you're assuming stuff and you're trying it's to not measure. assuming. This is something you measure. To, you can go outside on that ledge and measure the, the distance of so Polaris, and you have thereby you're measured math. your latitude. You're doing math to make it look like you're doing some more math and magic bullshit. And that's no. what it is. It's math and magic. It's, magic. it's, an ob it's not even math. You just see the picture when when you're at a when you're by the North Pole, Polaris is overhead. When you're on the equator, it's on the ground. In between, it depends on your latitude. It can be measured. Let's move on. Um.